Hey everyone, welcome to Coffee and Darts. This is going to be an exciting episode. I've got Dawson Michelle with us. Uh, we're going to be talking darts, uh, lawyerism, and Twitch. So this should be a, a really good one. Start throwing in some questions there in the comments. And guys, don't forget to like and share. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel and you're watching on YouTube, please go ahead and give us a subscribe. Hey, I uh, just want to give a shout out to our sponsors, of course, Shot Darts, who is an incredible manufacturer of barrels and other peripheral items for the darts community, as well as just being a great manufacturer for the darts community and offering up programs like the Young Guns. Um, also want to give a shout out to Magic Wear, of course, incredible jerseys like you see me wearing each and every episode, but check those out. They are wonderful jerseys. And I'm going to be, I played 18 hours in one of their jerseys, I think getting ready to play 24 hours for charity in one of their jerseys. So I'll be able to really tell you if it holds up. All right, guys. Uh, one other thing I want to mention just before I bring Dawson on is we are giving away a set of Dawson Michelle's barrels. We're giving away a $25 gift card to A to Z darts and giving away a mug. And how do you do that? Well, if you check the comments, I'm going to drop a link real quick, go to this link after the show and check that out, and it'll show you how to register for that, and it, there will be a drawing in about a day for that. So check that out. Just drop that link, and let's bring Dawson on and get the show rolling. Hello. Hey, Daw hey how's it going? Not too bad. How about you? Hanging in there. Just uh, as everybody can see, I'm not in my studio. I'm up in Big Bear enjoying some lake time. Uh, how are things over there in Canada? Uh, pretty uneventful for me right now. Just kind of waiting for classes to start back up, but... Uh... Yeah, it's it's good. I'm in a new apartment now and uh, living back in Canada, so it's it's been fun. Yeah. So where were so when you were darts doing the darts and doing the PDC, where were you living? Because I know you were living abroad. Yeah, it's. Uh, I started out. Uh, it was both in England, so I started out living in St. Helens, which is up north by Liverpool, and then uh, I moved to a small town uh, called. Uh, Oh, I forget the name of the town all of a sudden, but it's uh, it's about an hour from London. So I, I was down south, south central ish. Oh, nice. So for those that might not know who you are, which I, to be honest, probably aren't that many because I, I know a lot of people that have followed your career. Um, I actually have one of your black Dawson jerseys, the awesome Dawson jerseys. So oh, yeah. I've been, been hanging in since then. Um, yeah. But uh, and here, funny story. Real quick, I actually bumped into you like almost literally in the restroom at the Tropicana just before one of your matches. I was coming out, you were coming in, and I was like, uh, but that's a different story. Hey, so yeah, can you just talk a little bit about getting into darts? What brought you into darts and, and just a little bit of that, just so people know? Yeah, it's um so I started in darts, I started with the youth darts. It's uh my grandma just brought me out one night. And um, when she brought me out, uh, like I, I just I played around with the local kids there. And I remember the, the first day or the second day or something like that, I, I uh, took out a 147. And it wasn't even uh, uh, the proper way of doing it. I went triple 20 and then I tried to hit triple 17 and hit triple 19. And then I hit double 15. And I was like, I, I just remember, I remember that feeling. And that was kind of one of the reasons it started up. And then uh, ended up going to youth. Provincials the next year, making the team, uh, then went to youth nationals and uh, got second there my first year. And then went back the following year and qualified for the Youth World Masters, uh, uh, won the men's or the boys doubles and the, boy, and the mixed doubles. And yeah, just kind of kept building from there and then decided to go to Q school. And that's where, where it took me. Nice. So <clears throat> I, for some people, darts is 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 a natural thing it's not always hey you got to practice forever i've i've i have talked to a number of darts players and that was kind of it the, the hand-eye coordination was just there so it, it made it more functional um i i am curious what was it like playing because i know you played for the shot young guns um and just curious what that program was like or what was it like playing in that young guns are fantastic it was it was a great program for me especially uh uh, it, it's good for youth because like for me it taught me like how sponsorships kind of work and it taught me how all that kind of stuff works so it, it was definitely nice 
uh, a nice way to introduce kids into that system, get them uh, decked out in their sponsor gear. And uh, all kids like having the little patch on the shoulder and the, on their chest. So it's, it's, uh, it's good. It's, it, it, was, it was a good way to get into the, uh, what it's like being sponsored and stuff like that. So did you apply for that or did they reach out to you? Um, I can't actually remember how it went down. I think, I think they reached out to me because somebody pointed me out to them. I think it was, I think it might've been Terry Hayhurst that pointed me out to them. I think, but, uh, I could be wrong. Um, yeah, that's all right. So it was, it's a good program. I, I, my six year old who absolutely loves darts is a huge fanatic uh, of watching darts every weekend and playing consistently. He talks about being a young gun. So we'll, we'll see. We'll see how that goes. He's actually, he beat me two weeks ago. He's beat me 23 times, uh, but he beat me three weeks ago. We play soft tip and he beat me with a 150 checkout. He hat tricked me um, and checked me out at any six. So nice. fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, you know, that's another way that young guns are good is because um, it's, it's not all about just like, how many tournaments you're winning and things like that is it's important to them, but it's a, uh, the big, like one of the biggest part is like your character and how you treat others and like the thing, how you act and present yourself when you're at tournaments instead of, uh, it's instead of like just how many legs or how many matches you're winning. So it, it's a good way to teach uh, respect for the younger players as well. So it's it's not just how good you can play; it's how good a person you are at the same time. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. So I'm curious. Um, you know, I got to watch you in Vegas. You know, for three years. Um, you know, this year, of course, didn't happen. Uh, the second year, you were the prominent, you know, person on the poster, which was pretty awesome. Yeah. Um, and I just I loved watching you. Like I, I don't know if it was bumping into you in the in the restroom that made me a huge fan or or what it was, but. I became just a, a big fan of, you know, I'm an older guy. So this young guy that's, you know, from Canada that just seemed to have a great personality and enjoyed playing darts. What was it like? I mean, for those of us that are never going to stand at that Aki and play people um, like MVG or others in the PDC, what, what was that excitement like that first year? Um, The first year was unreal. Like, Going again against Wade, there was a little bit of a settling in because we had the North American Championship earlier in the day, and and most people in the back room were like they were they were focused on the North American Championship, and that was the one they wanted to win, and that was the one they were most concerned about. But for me, it was like I was concerned about the the second day where I got to play one of the the big names because like I just for for me that was always my dream is to play these guys on stage, so. It was like I'll have the rest of my life to try and qualify for the world championship, whatever. But like this was like the moment where I got to play one of these guys on stage. Uh, so that was the most important thing for me. So I almost used the North American Championship as like a day for settling in. And then uh, when it came to play uh, Wade, it was just it it was cool. Like I had met a few of those guys before going over for the UK Open qualifier, so it wasn't completely new to me, but it was still. Uh, it was still a pretty cool experience. It's kind of fun with it. You know, there was, there had to be close to four to 5,000 people there for that day. Um, and then I think I, I, I've watched that handshake with Wade a couple of times um, or lack of, I guess. And yeah. I mean, I, part of me is like, uh, you know, part, I'm a huge Wade fan. I think he's, he's a silent, you know, striker, silent killer. I mean, he's not, you know, um, uh, the silencer in any way, shape or form, but <laughs> he definitely, there's something about him that I really like. And he, um, sorry, my kids are in this window. They're yeah, <laughs> making <laughs> faces at me. Um, just that like, not, I don't know. I just, I kind of felt, I kind of felt like he did the, the wrong thing in that he should have been excited that this young kid beat him. Cause he's, he's got trophies he's got major or well he's got major wins because he, he has won a couple majors um how did that feel what was that like i mean i just i i remember sitting in in the audience and being like wow that was like wade lost like mm -hmm. i have to be honest no one expected you to win no yeah absolutely yeah, yeah I, I i seen the odds before i went and played that game it was <laughs> it was uh they were not in my favor but um no like uh 
I didn't even know that uh, James kind of stuck his hand out like that until after I watched the video back. And I was like, ooh, <laughs> he wasn't a big fan of that. No. Um, but, like, I, I didn't expect him to be happy about it at all. It was, uh, that never even crossed my mind if he would be excited for me. So, uh, like, I I don't really care how how he handled it. I mean, I was, that was kind of on him. And I talked to, I talked to him about it. Uh, once before we were in Ireland, and uh, he, he definitely wasn't happy. Yeah. Well, and that, that shows his competitive spirit, and that's what you want. You you know, when MVG loses, he's pissed. Yeah. Um, and, and that's what you want. And and I'm sure Wade was was mad. He he came into that expecting to win that. Um, so part of me is like, good for him, because that I like him. I, he's always my outside guy to win a tournament, because he mm-hmm. can. Um but at the same time, being there and watching that, I was excited to see. I mean, because you guys were the first match of the day, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Um, uh, I don't think it was. A, I think somebody came on before us. Um, I can't. Def, yeah, definitely someone came on before us because I remember watching in the back practice room. Uh, I can't remember which match it was. But uh, so, yeah, it, it wasn't the first one. But yeah, like, like I said, it's like especially in that kind of situation where it's five, five and he's missed six darts for the match. And it's like, it's not pretty. And then uh, for me to, to jump around, like I did, I pro like, I probably wouldn't have been over the moon about it either, but uh, probably both could have handled that situation a little bit better. Uh, you were excited and, and, you know, you just, you beat one of the stars of the PDC. I think he was ranked eighth at the time, or, I mean, he was in the top 10. So, mm-hmm. I mean, that's, I, I think everybody in the crowd, if you remember, we were all like, this is awesome. So yeah. um, that was cool. Um, and then you've had the opportunity to play some really big names and beat the number one in the world. Mm-hmm. I, I'm curious, what's it like being a young guy getting into the tour um, and having that opportunity to play? Of course, you've been able to play for Team Canada. Can you just give us a little bit of what that was like? And, and of course, playing for Team Canada, that's got to be, that to me would be the most exciting thing I could ever do is play for my country. Yeah, absolutely. The World Cup is uh, my favorite tournament to play in. And uh, uh, people that don't haven't played in the World Cup don't really get it. But I, I used to say to uh, like a lot of the guys on tour, it's like that the World Cup means more to me than even the World Championship would have. And it's uh, just because it's the aspect of playing for your country. And yeah, there's hundreds of thousands of pounds online more at the world championship, but you know, it's, it's not playing for your country. You're still playing for yourself then. So the world cup did mean a little bit, something more to me, but uh, when it comes to playing the pro tour and stuff like that, uh, it was, it was different experience than I thought it would be. Uh, I thought it would be when I got there to tournaments, I was, uh, always looking forward to it but that uh, uh the glam of it wears off a little bit after a while and then eventually uh, especially since i couldn't work other than darts over there because uh my visa that um like this is my job and this is how you pay your bills so you, you're not going in there anymore like oh look at that guy look at look i'm playing michael smith first round this is so exciting and it's like and it's like no i gotta beat this dude pay my bills like this is uh, the glam of wearing these big names wears off and you end up becoming actually like pissed when you lose versus just like got happy you got the opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't realize, I think I had heard something about some, like there were some visa issues and this has happened with a couple of players um, mm-hmm. when they've gone over and it's, you know, they're not able to work, which let's be honest. I mean, Marvin King was even, even working, you know, and he's a, he's a top 20 player. And mm-hmm. I mean, people think that just because you're in the PDC, you make a living playing darts. And the, the reality is, unless you're that top 10, uh, top 15, probably not going to happen. Yeah. I mean, like the still even the top 64 are making a comf- comfortable living, but it's, uh, it's just cracking into that top 64 where you retain your tour card, then you have consistent earnings and you get consistently invited to world championship and things like that. Is that's where the the money and the getting paid starts to go. Like even like if you're like 64th, you're not going to be a very very rich man, but you're you're making a living at it. So it's um it, it's just that line where you get into the top 64 is where uh, it kind of flips and changes. 
Yeah, so you get more you get more consistent, you know, ability to make a paycheck on a on a weekly basis. Mm -hmm, for sure. Yeah. So um here's a question for the world. Um worlds. I want I want them to integrate because it's two man teams. I want them to integrate a, a lady in there. I think it should be, you know, I think we should have three people teams. So we have two guys and a lady or two ladies and a guy for all I care. What What's your thoughts on that? Do you think that would change the dynamics? It would definitely change the dynamic. Um, I, I'm not sure. It's like, I know the PDC is big on uh, people that have gotten TV time. And then when it's, uh, I, I think where that might struggle is the smaller countries is they don't really have a lady and they don't really want to bring someone that's throwing shotgun shots onto yeah. a, a TV stage, so that that's the uh, that 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 would be the only issue there. But it, if like each country could bring a strong lady to the table, then I don't see why it wouldn't work. But it's, yeah. uh, it it would just be yeah, just if they could have every country bring a strong lady to the table. Yeah, I can see that being the downside. I know I know the top teams, top countries tend to have good lady players out there, just because it's it's. It, it's not a, um, it's not a smaller sport. It's a sport that everybody's playing. Um, mm -hmm. You know, your England, of course, and and Germany, and and so forth. There's going to be stronger lady players than mm -hmm. you know some of the smaller countries. So yeah. Plus the other thing is is that uh, the PDCs, the whole thing is that they're unisex and that they're one. Uh, like everybody plays together, equal opportunity for everybody. That's the whole motto. So, like, by introducing, like, a separate ladies section, I don't think that they'll ever do that again. Just because that's Barry's whole thing is just uh, uh, everybody equal opportunity and stuff like that. It, it surprised me when he had the ladies in the world championship for, like, their own qualifier. Because usually they just come through everybody else. Uh yeah, yeah I, th I think it was because the BDO, which is was an area where you could qualify. And of course, the BDO is defunct. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm happy that they did that, that they 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 saw the need and stepped up. But I've always said that darts is the one sport that is an equalizer for everybody. Mm -hmm. The distance is the same, no matter who you are, how tall you are, how short you are. Um, you know, you're throwing darts. Everybody, you're not as much as you're playing the other person from a mental perspective or you're trying to get under their skin, it's you and the dartboard. Yeah. Um, and there's no, nothing different for the other player. It's not like golf where a guy might be stronger um, than a lady so he can hit a ball further or things of that nature. It's mm -hmm. the one sport that equalizes everything. Yeah. It's the, I actually did a study on this in my uh, sociology class, my first year of college. Uh, it's uh, the difference between men and ladies and darts and there's, it's not much but uh, just on a, a consistent basis guys are more uh, uh, a programmed f for that kind of thing and it's not that the ladies can't get as good as the men and things like that it's just act ladies have to put in more work to do it and uh, so that's the 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 kind of the hard part there i'm not i'm not a, a brain surgeon or a brain scientist by any means but it's uh, uh from the people i talk to and stuff like that it's like there's uh certain things that uh men just have an easier time with i guess and darts happens to be one of them yeah well it's, it's just normal build up i mean men mm -hmm. as much as people don't want to admit this men and women are different and we were created differently so that we could have you know, we won't get into all that. I mean, the, the reality is there is a difference and some women have some of those aspects more than men do. And, you know, yep. some men like me, I could, I would get crushed by any PDC darts player, woman or man, because I don't have the same skill level. And I truly believe even if I played 24 hours a day for seven years, I wouldn't get that skill level because I don't have the hand-eye coordination. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I still like to play darts, but... Yeah, for sure. It, it's kind of like, uh, I want to say like related to height in a sense that like there's girls that are definitely taller than me, uh, but it's on average, I'm taller than most girls. It's just kind of it, it, like there's no, there's definitely uh, uh, things outside of the norm, but it's uh, like I'm just talking on a general uh, curve and a general a general thing is just guys tend to average higher. 
Yeah. Well, and I think the the other the other side to it, and we'll we'll kind of get off the ladies is uh, the fact that um, the playing time. The, you know, the guys, when they go play versus the ladies, when it was the BDO, like the ladies were playing for three sets where the guys, you know, and that was for the championship, mm-hmm. you know, where the guys are playing for seven or more sets, you're, you've got more playing time. You're, you're up there, you're doing it more. So it, there's just those differences. The nice thing about the PDC is women can win a tour card. Lisa Ashton won one. She's mm-hmm. in the tour. She just didn't get to show it this year because of COVID. So if this dies down a little and we're able to get back to some similarity of play, we'll, we'll be able to see her. And I think we'll see some other ladies get tour cards this year. Yeah, for sure. It's uh, bringing up Lisa getting a tour card. It's uh, everybody kind of, they talked about the Fallon thing as being the huge breakthrough for ladies darts. And uh, for me, it was like, it was Lisa Ashton getting her tour card. And now she's a full-time professional. That was a, a huge benchmark moment for ladies darts is that there's like a lady, that qualified all against the men to play against the men. And so like it Fallon, it was a, it was a, a cool experience and stuff like that for sure. But it was like, it was a, a weird situation where you had a, a 20, 21 year old kid and they're all screaming and people are telling his mom that uh, it's like all these nasty things in the crowd. And he's got this 21 year old kid has to deal with that uh, while everybody's rooting the other person on. Like I, it's not to take anything away from Fallon, but that was like, it, it was a, a pretty nasty sit, uh, situation that uh, Ted got thrown into. Whereas Lisa had to do it with no crowd, nobody screaming behind her, nothing. And she qualified all against the men and became a full-time professional, which is the, like, I, I think that's definitely the benchmark moment for ladies darts. Yeah. I think both of them happening in the same year <laughs> and, you know, uh, Fallon being able to, beat mentor at the same time then lisa i wish they had talked more about the lisa uh getting her tour card at the same time i I, and i'll and i know that fallon she looks up to lisa and and i mean that's someone that's a huge mentor so Mm -hmm. i know she understands that that step for women's darts you know what she did was huge but what lisa did really starts to level that playing field so yeah absolutely yeah it was like uh Def- definitely like what Fallon did was uh was huge but I think it was just it was a uh, it kind of bothered me that it was a uh, that like Fallon got all the attention they didn't really focus on Lisa getting a tour card which I thought was just so amazing and yeah. but she just didn't get that much credit for it yeah and, I, and I'll I'll say that you know COVID of course crushed some of that because I think if she had gone in and played well mm-hmm. um that would have really it just would have been exciting. Unfortunately, this year has turned out the way it is. But I have to ask you, so I, I follow you on social media. Um, so I've seen the the transformation of, of Dawson into awesome Dawson with the, the ripping and the the eating and the, and the healthiness. What's your take? Because I think, I believe with this young crowd coming into the PDC, that we're going to see guys that are really watching what they eat and how much they're drinking Mm -hmm. which I know with the travel, it's just processed food constantly and beers and other things that are, that are available. But I think we're going to see that. Do you ever see the PDC having like a workout trailer? Uh, no, I don't, I don't see the PDC ever having a workout trailer. I actually, I talked about having healthier food in the venue at one point and they kind of laughed me out of the room. So so I I don't think they're overly uh, concerned about that. I think they're actually, they like the fact that a lot of dart players aren't in the greatest shape because uh, it makes it more relatable. I, I think they like having a, a couple of guys that are really jacked or really ripped, like Gerwin Price. You got Josh Payne. Uh, there's a couple of guys like that that are in really good shape. And I think they like having those anomalies, but I also think they like having their relatable guy up there. Would too. Yeah. No, it, it makes sense that that aspect of it, but I it's, some of the guys have dropped a couple of stones. We'll, we'll use the right terminology. I'm in America; it'd be pounds, but yeah. you know they've dropped a couple stones coming back because they took some time during quarantine to work out. Um, I think that's a thing. My thing is, I would and I I need to work out a little bit more. I have I had kids, and and that's all I'm going to say. Once you have kids, <laughs> as good looking as I was, it just came <laughs> out. I got dad bod, but I'm getting out of it. My wife and I are like, we're going hardcore. We're going to do a uh, whole 30 for 60 days. 
and just get back to the way we were and working out. But I think having some kind of routine or something for darts players from that perspective, I, I, I just think it needs to be introduced. I'm hoping that someone, you know, maybe I'll do it. I don't know. Maybe someone can come up with the darts workout. Um, <laughs> I just think it would be kind of funny. Um, so what was, and, oh, and I, this is something I wanted to make sure I brought up. So dancing Dimitri, who of course won a major, he spent some time with Peter Wright, Peter Wright schooled him. And then he schooled Peter Wright, um, and won that tournament. But you were truly the first dancing star when it comes to the PDC. Do you feel like he stole something from you? No, no. Dimitri was before my time. The, D Dimitri, Dimitri and Devin were both uh, dancing on stage before I ever ever went to floss. It was, uh, that was probably one of the uh, ideas that I ended up flossing uh, that one time. But that was uh, literally every time I've danced on stage, it's been a bet from Ted Evitz. <laughs> Ted, Ted was like, you won't do it. And I was like, I will. He was like, no, you won't. And then I ended up doing it. Yeah. Well, I mean, you were the probably the most famous first dancer, you know, that I can think of, at least in the PDC. So, I mean, the flossing was was epic. Um, <laughs> and it, they still show it. They still talk about it. So um, I think you're immortalized. <laughs> floss. I'm glad my uh, I, I'm glad that uh, the floss got me immortalized. <laughs> so, at least it was good for something. But uh, yeah, no, uh, Devin, Devin's been uh, doing his dance and uh, the mirror thing. I don't even know how he does it, but it's the coolest thing I've ever seen. But uh, uh, Devin's been doing that since probably before 2010. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm a big fan of Devin's as well. I, I mean, I like a lot of the big name guys. My, I mean, uh, Gerwin Price is is one. Of, he's probably my top three. Uh, I love him. I love just the aspect of who he was and where he's at, but I like football and I'm an American. So people screaming in your face is kind of normal. Um, and then, you know, Peter Wright, how can you not like the, the people, the people's champion? Um, and then I, James Wade, those are kind of my guys that I like root for when they come in. But then I like some of these other guys that are still figuring out or journeymen, you know, or getting there and like Devin's just year after year, we see his averages go up. We see him doing some stuff. I'm excited to see what the next two years roll yeah. out for him. Yeah, it's it's gonna be interesting. It's a uh, like the the darts and like who's playing well is always changing. So like it, it's it's gonna be interesting to see what young guys are coming through. I know you have a, a lot of uh, the bigger young guys that people are watching now. Uh, Kean Barry is a huge one where. A phenomenal talent and a lot of people are watching him uh people are watching Leighton bennett but it is kind of early for him there's yeah there's, so we'll, we'll see uh how that pans out um yeah there's there's a definitely a few that yeah uh, I, there's a good young class that's coming in as the money has hit the pdc and we're seeing more money of course you're going to see more talent come in because they're like oh wait i can get paid for this yeah um so that helps I am, I'm kind of curious on your take on Corey Cadby because you were in the PDC as he was, you know, just all of a sudden thrown into this limelight and he made some errors. And I know a lot of people say it, it was a visa issue, but I've seen his interview that happened a couple months ago. And the visa issue was just a minor piece compared to what was going on in his life. And he gave up his tour card and now he's wants to come back. Did you ever get the opportunity to, to talk to him? What's your thoughts on any of that? Yeah, so me and Corey, like, I won't go uh, like too much into his personal life uh, by any means, but uh, like, me and Corey are, are decent, uh, decent enough friends and decent enough mates, as he'd say. <laughs> but uh, he's like, he's honestly, he gets a lot of flack uh, just because, like, he does have a, a hard upbringing. For sure and uh, uh he gets a lot of flack for things that i don't think he should get flack for yeah. um and he's a phenomenal dart player that that man is so good that it's just unreal when he decides that he's just gonna have a day he's gonna have a day and like it's just unreal and uh like the visa issues and stuff like that i can relate to um I, I know he's got a phenomenal manager with Mac Elkin, so he would have definitely helped sort that as much as he could have on his line. Uh, but honestly, like Corey, like 
like from like the to the extent that I know him, he's a good guy, and uh, he, like yeah, I think he got a lot, a, a little bit too much flack and a little bit too much uh, hate for the things that he actually did that people just kind of speculate about. Yeah, I mean, listening to that interview, it, it sounded like a, a a young man who who understood that he had done a couple things wrong. He was very thankful for his management team. He was thankful for Target. Um, you know, people tried to help him and stick beside him. He just had to work through some personal issues, um, which it sounds like he's done a lot of that, um, and he's ready to come back. And he understands. He, I mean, he was thrown in the limelight to be the next one in a sense, uh, and that's a huge amount of pressure for someone that's not really ready for it i take it to the nfl here in america where we see these quarterbacks that are thrown in and they start their first year and they're they're supposed to be the savior of the team and 99 out of 100 fail Mm -hmm. one guy can do it and i just look at at Corey's situation i'm excited to see him come back because he's a phenomenal darts player Mm -hmm. uh i want to see him in um uh, gerwin price kind of with their attitudes i think they would be good good mates as as Corey would put it uh yeah. outside but i i think those two personalities at the dartboard are going to be fun to watch yeah it's uh the those two going at it uh i remember was it the world series finals that they played each other or something like that i believe so i remember one tournament where they played each other my camera what tournament it was but i thought it was the most hilarious thing i've ever seen uh just feel like it, nonstop entertainment from those two and they they know how to wind up a crowd and they know how to get everybody going so it's usually the two people that everybody hates so so it's funny to watch the crowd try and like pick somebody that they like out of the two people they they hate yeah Uh, but like they're honestly both especially like gerwin is gets so much flack and he's such a good guy like he's like it uh, behind the practice board uh like in the practice room and stuff like that he's such a good guy and he's such a good guy to talk to. And like, I've, I've never had a problem with him. I, I think every sport needs a villain type of thing. And, and he was given that role. He kind of, he kind of brought it upon himself in a way, but he's, mm-hmm. he's embraced it fairly well. And he has moments where he's like, I'm done being the villain and he'll lash out. And unfortunately that helps the villain status stay. But mm-hmm. I look at him and I've seen his social media stuff and things he's done outside of darts and he seems like a really good guy. Um, mm-hmm. He just has, he's got a personality when he comes to the hockey. Peter Wright, super quiet. I got to spend 15 minutes chatting with him. We kind of ended up in the same area in Vegas um, one year and we just, we talked. And he's quiet, but he'll talk in one on one situation. But when he gets to the hockey, it's a new personality. And I think that's what people don't grasp. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a lot of what you see on TV. Like, there's a there's a lot of guys that you think were super nice when you watch them on TV, and they're not behind closed doors. And there's guys that you think are rude and disrespectful at the hockey, but behind closed doors and behind, off the camera and stuff like that, they're a completely different person. Uh, a lot of it comes down to, uh, like, we get told that uh, we want you to be emotional, we want you to celebrate, we want you to do all this, Peter Wright. Uh, they gave him special permissions to wear his own kind of pants and stuff like that. They want him to be flamboyant. They want him to do all this stuff, so he will keep doing it. Um, but then you get into guys that smile nice and big and are super gracious and like shake your hand and whatever. But when it comes to actually having a conversation with them, they kind of suck as people. So. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's a show, and you got to remember, as much as it's it's a professional darts match going on, there's a show behind it. There's mm-hmm. dollars behind it. And if this show's boring, mm-hmm. people aren't going to watch it. So mm-hmm. um, I got to ask, uh, did you ever have an opportunity to play some of the older generation, like the Bobby Georges or, you know, I'm a huge Bobby George from the old time. I just love his flash and I, I I'm excited to watch him play whenever the, you know, the opportunities arise. Cause he does do it every once in a while. Mm-hmm. Um, any opportunities to meet some of those guys or play with them? No, like, a, um, the the night that uh, Eric uh, Bristow died, he was uh, I went to the same uh, Liverpool Premier League, and um, I was watching the crowd and stuff like that. And uh, he was he was there actually, and uh, like I I had seen him around and stuff like that that night. And then all of a sudden on the screens, I'm sitting there watching the crowd. And they have on the screens like rest in peace, Eric Bristow. And it's like I just seen the dude. Yeah, uh, like he was he was just right there. What do you mean? And then. Uh, 
Yeah, so that was that time. Uh, there's been a few, like, the only, like, older school player that I've gotten to play is probably Steve Beaton because Steve, Steve Beaton has been playing in the PDC before I was born. So yeah. he, he's been there since the inception. I mean, the guys, he, the, the bronze Adonis is, is, is truly from the Adara, uh, the, the time frame when Adonis would have been around. So, yeah. yeah. So yeah. I like him. That's another, that's another generational play. And Paul Lem, uh, mm-hmm. these are guys that, you know, have just tested the times and have done phenomenal things. Uh, mm-hmm. and so I, I like watching some of those older things. I have this, passion and i keep talking about it hopefully it'll gain steam they need to create a legends tour where there's maybe five tournaments a, you know maybe across the world you know three of them somewhere in europe and one in america because i need it and then one somewhere else where they bring back some of these guys uh that have retired and and let them play in a fun term tournament kind of format mm-hmm. and and just have this legends tour so s- those of us that came to darts a little late get the opportunity to watch them yeah, that'd be cool. I know they uh, they did something like that for a while. Um, the, it's on YouTube somewhere, the Legends of Darts or something like that. I know they did it for a while, but it w- wasn't overly uh, taken off, I don't think. But uh, Darts is a lot bigger now than it was then, so I, I think it would definitely be a, a cool uh, a cool thing to see is to see Bobby and uh, see Bobby and Rod Harrington or something like go at it. I think that'd be a lot of fun. I think it'd be great. Um, and, and of course, you know, Phil Taylor technically retired. Um, I still think he could kick the crap out of most people oh, yeah. uh, in the P to C. I think he would be a top 10 player for sure, but he retired on a high note in a good way. Mm-hmm. Um, Barney, un, you know, retired shortly after basically the next year and it didn't go as well. And of course, Barney's a five-time world champion. He's, you know, he's, he's done a lot for darts. He's talking about potentially coming back what's your thoughts on that? Uh, I don't think he will. I, I think he's, he makes enough money with his exhibitions and stuff that uh, I, I don't think he will. Uh, especially like the target sponsorship. I can't imagine how much that's for it. So I don't think he needs the the money that it comes along with putting that four or five hours a day in. Uh, yeah. I, I think he's, I think he's better off to enjoy his retirement. To be honest, it's a, he's, he's worked hard. He's made a lot of money doing it and just enjoy it. Just relax. Uh, I, it was, it was already sad for me to see that like when he got to play in Rotterdam and uh, the Premier League there where he announced his retirement yeah. and uh, said like, I'm going to retire. And like, this is my last night. I want to finish playing in ne- the, the Netherlands and uh then all like the sponsors and kind of everything like that drug him out and said, no, you can't do that yet. And so it's like, I, I thought that would have been a beautiful way to end it is this last time playing in a PC event is in Rotterdam, yeah. but not how it ended up playing out. And I, I, I wish, I wish he could have had that. Cause I was just, it was such a beautiful night. Uh, but I, I called him retiring that night. I said when he gave his necklace to uh, the, his grandson in the crowd, I think it was his grandson, um, put it around his neck, and uh, I was like, oh, yeah, he's retiring tonight, and then he's not going to be able to because he's got sponsors that, that are going to tell him no. Yeah. Well, you know, the sponsorships, they, 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 they want to work that, um, and I think that might have been the problem because going forward, he just kind of was like, all right, I'm here, but it wasn't like he was there. You know, he would show up, but I think it was more the the sponsorship push uh, for him. I think he he had decided to retire, and they told him he couldn't. And I think he's getting the itch, but that itch he, will go away. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's, it, everybody misses it. The, yeah, like I, I'm still I'm missing it right now, and so I'm I'm getting kind of excited for the CDC to kick back up here. So because I've been practicing and playing and stuff like that a bit. So uh, that's the, the next question, Dawson. Okay. Yeah. We, we, you, and if you guys don't know, Dawson's kind of stepped away from darts, looking at becoming a lawyer, uh, as I understand it. What was that decision like? And have you actually stepped away or is this just a break? Um, I, it's definitely just a break. I think that, uh, I don't think darts is kind of one of those things that you can play until you're a lot older. So 
like no matter where I'm starting from, I'll still always have that experience that like knowing how matches work and knowing how to like handle myself in certain big situations. So that part will never go away. Um, it's just getting back into a fluid uh, routine again and getting that muscle memory back is uh, the only struggle. But I've been putting some time in now with uh, just kind of behind the scenes when I got nothing else to do right now. So uh, and I'm actually playing OK. It's uh, I'm not I'm not playing too bad. I'm so probably I'm, I'm probably throwing an 85 to a 90. Uh, yeah, I'll take your OK any day of the week, man. I'll take your OK. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, it's like, it's not gonna it's not gonna win me much in a PDC room right now, but I'm I'm still I'm, I could throw down right now for sure. So so it was it was a break. It wasn't this. You didn't did you turn in your tour card? Did you kind of do that and say hey I'm done or? Uh, well, in a sense, a way like I I would have had to go back to Q school because I was outside the top sixty four. Uh, so I would have had to go back, but I just opted out of not going back and not trying to retain it. So that was a. Uh, the issue there so I, I did lose my tour card in a sense but i also gave it up in a sense because i didn't try and get it back yeah i was gonna say a tour card's good for two years correct yeah, yeah so this would have been your second year though right no i i had my first year it was a um, first year when i played the world cup with uh john and yep then uh the second year was the year with jim long okay that's right yeah yeah, yeah. so well I'm, I'm glad to hear that you're going to come back or that there's at least a desire to um, many darts players have taken breaks, um, and you're young, you're young guy, you're young lad, as they would say. Mm -hmm. Um, but so I'm, I'm excited to hear that. Cause I had heard some things in the pipeline, you know, the social media pipeline that you had just given up and you were done and you were going to become a lawyer and that was it. And then, uh, and then I heard about Twitch happening. So, um, so you're going to come back or potentially, I mean, there's the desire, the, the hope to, that that's cool. I'm excited about that. That's got me going. I was going to say that the darts we're giving away today, which by the way, we are giving away a set of darts, uh, a $25 gift card to target or to, um, a to Z and a, uh, a coffee mug from coffee and darts. And there is a link in the chat. I'm going to put it back in there right now. You guys just go to that and you'll be able to sign up for that giveaway. I was going to say they were uh, limited edition, like one of a kind barrels, but <laughs> maybe not. Yeah. I mean, like, uh, I don't know if I'll ever move back to England to play. I don't know if I'd uh, ever go the full time PDC route again. I think the only way for me to do something like that is qualify for the world championships and have a big run there. Uh, like that. I think that's the only way that I'd end up moving back is if I just got a big run in the world championships or something like that. But, uh, so I wasn't overly, I like living in Canada and I like, I like my country and I didn't, I wasn't a big fan of living away from my family and stuff like that. And it took its toll on me and my darts game towards the end of it. Yeah, totally can understand that. And you're, you're back in Canada. We do have a CDC, um, which is picking back up and it's, it's gaining steam. Mm -hmm. uh, I think there's a, there are a lot more players are knowing you know, knowing about it, and I think with the PDC kind of helping back it and so forth, I think we might see a really good you know basically tournament series out of the CDC. I'm excited that you're thinking about coming back to that because so I'll certainly get to see you play. So mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's uh, I'll I'll be playing the CDC. I still have my uh, uh, tour card and stuff like that. And uh, like I'm still like signed up, so it's I like I'll I'll be playing some of the CDC events. It just depends on uh, on how much I get to play with, how busy school gets and stuff. Well, good, and that'll be exciting. So school school is for becoming a lawyer. Is that correct? Yeah, like it's a, my undergrad degree is in finance. So I'm I'm majoring in finance, and then uh, I'm using that to try and hopefully get into law and. Uh, focus on practicing corporate law. Nice. All right. Yeah. Are you thinking about becoming the first like dart super agent? <laughs> yeah. No, I mean like my, my, my manager, my agent, he's pretty good. So yeah, yeah. I'm going to have to give him a super agent title, but <laughs> uh, not, so that's not in the works there. Right. You know, not going to become no, that. No, I, I, I don't think I'd really have a interest in, in uh, managing dart players or anything like that. So, yeah, I'm sure those contracts and those players can be uh, daunting. Yeah, yeah, it's a uh, yeah. I don't, I don't. That definitely, I don't think would interest in me. I could have a deal with all the players, <laughs> the crap that they have going on. 
on a day-to-day basis. So what's it like? I mean, do you see a lot of players that have like management teams behind them and coaching teams behind them? Is that commonplace or do you, players typically just help coach each other or yeah, it, really. teams? Yes. Uh, there's definitely always like all the top players for the most part, except for like, you see like Gerwin Price, I know manages himself. Uh, P- Peter Wright, his wife manages him. Um, so there's definitely players that like, uh, have all most players have management teams when it comes to coaching not really i mean like you might have your practice buddy that might point out something you're doing wrong but darts is isn't a big coaching thing it's just one of those things that you have to learn by doing it uh, because there's so many different situations and so many different ways and like learning how to handle yourself in certain situations learning how to keep it cool is something that you can't really teach and you just it's just all about putting the reps in and all about like getting the time in doing it and that's uh the biggest like the biggest thing is it's not really coaching it's just not putting the time in to do it nice yeah um i know of other sports that i always wondered like volleyball has coaches and i'm like how are i don't get that one you know the professional beach volleyball players have coaches i'm like i don't understand that but uh management i can totally understand because you got to manage contracts you got to manage situations and travel and and someone's got to deal with all that. And as a player, you know, you can't spend all your time trying to figure out your travel, your hotel and all, Mm -hmm. all those pieces. You need to do what it is that you need to do. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So let's talk Twitch for a little bit. Um, You've gotten into Twitch Mm -hmm. and um, if anybody is curious, let me, I'm going to throw a little thing up here so you guys can, can go follow Dawson over on Twitch. So if you guys see that, um, just curious, um, what was the drive for that? Is this like a you and a bunch of buddies that have gotten together and said, "Hey, we're gonna do the Twitch thing"? Or no, is I honestly, I was just like, uh, I got a gaming PC. I got my first gaming PC, and then uh, I started looking into it, and it's like I could stream off of this. So I was like, I'm gonna try it, see see how it goes. And then I, I never in my life, I don't think I've ever done anything kind of halfway. So I just kind of fully went at it and. Uh, worked really hard to get the layouts done and uh, everything like that. But uh, yeah, the, it was it was honestly just kind of uh, once I got my gaming PC, the idea kind of just crossed me and went from there. Nice. Yeah, I've watched a couple of them because I'm following you. So it, it triggers and sends the, the signal that, hey, Dawson's playing. So I've watched it. I'm not a huge Twitch guy personally, like watching other people play video games. My kids on the other hand, they think it's the best thing ever. Mm-hmm. Um, like we, we don't even have TV anymore because all they care about is YouTube, uh, watching Twitch, and they've got some other program thing that they watch too. Um, and that's kind of it for them. Yeah. For, for me, I'm like, uh, cool, you can play a video game. All right, great. But um, I, it's kind of fun to see the interaction. I've watched you where you're working with team members and you guys are doing some stuff. And I think it's kind of fun. I, I am also jealous because I'm used to video games with like maybe four buttons. Yeah, There's like 28 buttons on a controller now and I just can't do it. Yeah. I mean, like I, I think the cool part I think for uh, especially darts fans, is like bringing the, say I bring in like Ted Evans and Barry Vampire and watching us play a video game and bickering at each other and things like that. Uh, just because we're really good buddies. And uh, I, I like, I, I've gotten decent at Call of Duty. I'm I'm definitely not like a, a Nick Merckx or a, a Swag or something like that. But it's a, I've gotten pretty decent. So it's I thought that would bring in another element to it as well. Well, that's cool. I mean, I've again I've seen some of it. Um, you know, I'll go watch for a couple minutes um, if it, it dings and I'm on my computer or something. So I highly recommend that everybody go check that out. Again, here is the the address to find Dawson. It's kind of fun, and if you haven't ever watched Twitch or not familiar with Twitch, go check it out. There's there's actually some pretty fun, interesting things um, that are on there. I first follow Alpha Gaming on YouTube uh, just to get you know a- ideas for YouTube and stuff. And I know he's mainly doing the Twitch stuff, but still a really nice guy and seems to have some good information out there. So mm-hmm. he's a, he's a guy that I follow. But yeah, um, <coughs> excuse me there. So um, MVG. Everybody wants to know this one. I kind of saved this question. You beat MVG. Mm-hmm. What was that match like? What's he like? 
Um, and how excited were you? Yeah, I mean, like I know I knew Michael decently well before then because we have the same management crew. So uh, that, like, I, I knew him before then. So it was a good guy. But uh, uh, the match, a lot of stuff happened uh, before that uh, behind uh, the closed doors in the back practice room. That uh, was funny. That um, so I uh, like we were shoot, throwing for the bowl and things like that, and um, he he won the bowl. And then uh, he said, uh, they were talking to us about, like, who's throwing first? Michael's like, I'm throwing first to mine. And I was like, then I'll throw first to mine. And then uh, then he was like, uh, you're just purposely playing me? And I was like, yeah, I'm going to be a. Uh, then it was just kind of the back and forth just lipping off at each other backstage. And then, uh, yeah, it was practicing before we went on. It was uh, a, lot of, a lot of lipping off and a lot of head games. So it was, ended up making things really funny. Uh, Especially when I had the outcome that I did, thank God. Um, but yeah, it was like it, it, it was it was a lot of fun. It, it was cool. I don't really consider it like I beat Van Gerwen because we still lost. Like it's I I sure I I played a role in the like making sure we get to a doubles decider. But at the end of the day, Michael still came out from that situation on top. So. I, I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't overly consider it like I beat Michael because like they still beat us as a team and it was a team event. So I, I, I just happened to take a set off of them in best of seven. Well, I, w- I will say that, you know, from an individual standpoint, I mean, there, you can always say I got one over on you from an individual standpoint. Yeah. You know, so I mean, and that's always I mean, that, not a lot of people can say that, mm. you know, Um I have this belief that because he's gotten a family and I know what it's like to have a family. And of course he's added to that, that his dominance is going to slack. I think he loses the number one uh, title here in the next year or two, just because of that, that's just such a different dynamic. And I don't think people always grasp what it can do to someone when they're playing. Cause so much is going on in your head. You know, your wife just talked about the minivan having you know, break problems and you're like, Oh crap, I got to take care of that when I'm done playing here. Mm -hmm. Um, that type of mentality, I think he slips, but then as the kids get a little bit older, he, he makes this dominant run back. Um, that's my opinion on it. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. It's the Michael. He's a, he's a whole different animal uh, when it comes to, and you never write him off. People are always like, who do you think is going to win this tournament? Who do you think is going to win this tournament? It's like, if you say anybody, but Michael is the favorite, is like there's you're wrong because Michael is Michael is the favorite in every single thing he goes into play, uh, regardless of how he's playing at the time. Uh, it's like sure he can be beaten and anybody can be beaten and it's gonna happen more and more as the standard of darts goes up and there's less room for error. But Michael is the the most talented player and the uh, the best skilled player to ever walk the planet. It's far none. Yeah, he's phenomenal, and his his ability to turn on, um, you know, he'll notice that you're down, and instead of kind of laying off like some players do, they they play the way the other players playing. Yeah, he looks at it, and he's like, "Okay, I'm stepping on your neck. I'm gonna crush you now." It's yeah, okay. it's that kill yeah. instinct. Yeah, he's definitely got it. <laughs> so uh, the other thing I always talk about and, and think that would be really interesting to see, like Michael does the sock pull. Someone needs to basically sponsor his socks and have this green MVG sock when he goes to pull it up and shoes. How come no shoe sponsor has come in and created the best shoe for darts players or even it, like, why isn't Nike there? Like, yeah, I mean, like Nike's probably not there because there's a, uh, most players aren't in the greatest of shape and they're all about uh, the, the physical excellence and things like that. Um, Nike, like when it comes to shoes, I know we do have very strict guidelines when it comes to what we can wear for shoes. Um, you have to get, you have to get your shoes approved by the the PDPA uh, or the PDC, whoever's there. You just kind of go talk to somebody and make sure they're okay. But um, yeah, it's, it, it, it'd be cool to definitely see uh, getting shoe sponsors in there. Um, this is like get stance in the sponsor of anger and stock pole. Yeah. yeah, I just I think that would be I don't understand. I mean, the, the shoes and and all that are are so noticeable. Everybody sees what what's on your feet because they show that consistently 
on TV, I would think that someone may, like Puma or Adidas, Adidas, let me say it correctly. We say Adidas over here. Yeah. But I would think someone would would um, to be like, okay, we're going to get in here and we're going to build the darts player shoot because there's hundreds of thousands of eyeballs mm -hmm. consistently seeing people's feet, which is weird. Um, <laughs> I just think it would be kind of cool. And I think the stance going after MVG for socks would be awesome. They yeah. Would be great. So they're local here in, in California. At least I know they've got a main office here. Mm -hmm. um, I should give them a call and be like, guys, you got to check this out. <laughs> so, yeah. I, I honestly, I think it, uh, I think it would, will happen eventually where the big uh, sponsors and st stuff like that uh, start coming into play. But uh, I think it's just because the American market isn't big enough yet. I think that's uh, the reason that they probably wouldn't pull the trigger quite yet, but the American market is growing and you're getting more people knowing about darts all the time. So it's, yeah, that fears me uh, at least, or I have a fear of the fact of how Americans and I, I am one and, and, you know, I'm part of that, attitude of that we need to crush and be the biggest and all that um but i always have a fear that when we get involved with something we try and and commercialize and capitalize something so much that we we destroy part of the beauty of what it is so i do fear the day that that happens um that it becomes that and at the same time i want to see darts become a national stage situation beyond what it is now mm -hmm. So. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's like I get what you mean about the commercialization. I mean, darts is it's pretty commercialized already. Um, so I like I don't think it, it would change too much. Um, but yeah, I, I think I think it'd be fine. It's yeah. Uh, I, I, well, you've I'm, been there. I haven't, so you know you would know. Yeah, I mean, like when you get to playing the TV events and stuff like that, it's very very similar to going to watch uh, a football or a hockey or basketball game. When it's uh, like going to watch the Premier League, it's uh, it's they're very very similar experiences. Yeah, and I know being in Vegas, you know, there it it had that feel. You know, they definitely you could tell that the sponsorship you know took precedent and um, their stuff. But there's still that that you know you you get the the ability to see players. You still have that communication with them as fans. You're mm -hmm. not so distant from them. They're you know they're part of it's a community and yeah. they're. They're just the top echelon of that community. They still will mingle with those of us that are at the lower end from a playing standpoint, but we're all still that community. And I hate to ever see that be lost. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, I don't think uh, it'd be lost. I, I know like in, uh, at the world series events, you're going to get that experience a lot more than you will at, uh, uh, say the, the premier league, for example, because at the, at the premier league, there's so many people there and the security is escorting you everywhere. And, uh, walking you through and uh, I even noticed it too as um, like at the World Cup as I had to walk through the crowd to get to the, uh, the watching area and the spectating area and after I uh, beat Michael I was I was going to walk out and they're like whoa 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 and then uh, like they walked me out and like I wasn't allowed to really like sit and stand around and socialize with people because it was just gonna create too much of a distraction so it's like I, I I, I get it, the but at the like at the World Series events, you're definitely gonna get that a lot more. That whole player to fan interaction, just seeing yeah. them around and stuff. Yeah, and I'll say over here again. I, I refer to the Las Vegas because we we literally had three tournaments in in it's been forever. Um, that you know I got to experience that. And of course, New York didn't happen this year, which I think would have been a completely different experience than Vegas was. Um, as much as there were fans there. I sat at a table um, and I would like, I would come, this was my break from my family's. I'd go watch this. And I sat at a table for the three days and literally everybody that I sat with was from Europe. Um, you know, I was surprised probably 50, it was a 50% makeup of Europeans versus Americans. Um, I can't imagine what it's like over in Europe in some of these um, arenas, how crazy the fandom is. Yeah. It's nuts. And the, uh especially like over there, like all these, the players are all household names. Right. So it's, uh, people definitely do go crazy sometimes when they get to, uh, meet them. Um, so it's like, there, there's certain things with that you have to be slightly careful of, but, um, most, most star players don't get like a bad hassle. 
it's uh when you're walking around they don't get uh people sticking cameras in your face right away and like just uh like dart players they usually get good castle where it's hey people come up to you and say hey like can i get a picture and it's like yeah no problem like we like dart players and like unless you're like mid eating or like something like that they usually don't really care um uh, it's that like mo most players actually like it is especially like if you're uh say like uh I i'm walking through in vegas and i'm with ted and somebody asked me for a picture but didn't ask ted of like it's always like that <laughs> like or or vice versa so it's like it, it's it's never hassle and so and unless it's somebody like just sticking a camera in your face which is uh people like most big dart players like to just socialize with everybody yeah yeah and that's again it's one of the things i love about this sport over other sports is there is accessibility to players but it seems like the fans have a little bit more respect mm -hmm. and understanding that hey he's a person too yeah um and and you need to give him some space and and when it's the right time they're going to make themselves available mm -hmm. um so <coughs> excuse me um out of curiosity uh, you know, what was it like being over in Europe then? Cause you, you'd gotten some notoriety. I mean, there had been people that pegged you as being one of the next top 10 players and that you, you, you really had this going for you just because of some of the accolades and, and some of the things you had done at the hockey. Was it kind of like, did people know who you were? Yeah. The, the guys over there all, all kind of knew who I was already. Um, so like it, it was a lot of pressure uh going into it i should say just just because i was 22 when i got my tour card and uh i i had especially like didn't just expect these things of myself i felt other people expecting me to do these things too and then i was like yo how great would it be for north american darts if i a canadian kid just came up through and started doing all these things and it's like now i'm trying to do it for some somebody else besides me and so you can't really do that. You have to just play for yourself, essentially. So, um, yeah, it, it was difficult. And it was a difficult adjustment. I feel like I ended up making that adjustment, but it was far too late. Yeah. Well, and, and, and I will say, you know, again, with my hopes that you're going to come back and really have that dominant situation, it's better to learn that now than to be 30-something or 40-something and have that pressure and, and just that the differences that go with that. Um, mm -hmm. I think if you look at Peter Wright, you know, there was, he played and he was beating guys and he was doing well. And it just, the mental um, fortitude and strength to deal with some of that stuff wasn't there. And he, he backed away and then he came back mm -hmm. and we get the snake bite personality and we get this situation. And I think if you look at a lot of famous people and I'm going to, I'm going to drop the rock Wayne, uh, Dwayne Johnson, mm -hmm. um, kind of the same thing. You know, when he started with WWF at the time, um, I have buddies that are huge, huge wrestling fans, so I know all this stuff. <laughs> you know, he, he didn't have the personality. I mean, he had something. There was something there, but he had to go away and find himself, and then he came back, and, of course, he is what he is today. Yeah. Um, and, and I think as people, we need to do that no matter what, we do is we 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 get into something we learn that we're not all we thought we were mm -hmm. we come back a little bit we we understand it and then we come back and we can dominate yeah yeah for sure it's uh like yeah there's you have to learn how to lose before you can learn how to win and uh that's that's the biggest thing for me is uh if i'm gonna make a comeback i definitely learned how to lose <laughs> being over there so yeah it's, uh, we'll see how it goes well, works. I'm excited. I know we. I can say that because I know that um, those that follow me and, and stuff are are excited to see you play. Because uh, uh, I've talked a little bit about you, and of course, we've had um, other people that know you on the on the show, and and uh, your name has come up. So uh, there are quite a few people that are excited to to see where things go. I hope you get you become a lawyer, um, and you're able to work that at the same time. That would be, you know, I think great. I think I look at people. Um, like Jeff Smith, you know, the silencer who's got the side thing that really helps him mm -hmm. um, to be that much better a darts player. Because I don't think a lot of people grasp that to get into the sport and do well, you have to have the financial backing. Mm -hmm. It's just really important. Yeah, for so. sure. 
So, hey, um, so our time is, is pretty much up. Um, we've, we, I would sit here and talk forever with you, but um, I don't know that I can, I, just, I don't know that I can completely do that, but um, <laughs> it's been a huge pleasure. And for me, I am a big fan. Um, like I said, I've even got one of your black um, jerseys that's been signed by you. Um, and if nobody knows what I'm talking about, sorry, I know what I'm talking about. Um, <laughs> So yeah. uh, I've yeah. been a fan and, and you know, I, I'm excited to see where things progress. And, of course, we have many years to, to get there and, and do things. So um, thanks for being on the show. If anybody wanted to follow you or, you know, keep track of, of what's going on or in regards to Twitch, um, where could they do that? Yeah, well, thank you. It's uh, like you can get me on Instagram at, uh, at Dawson Marshall. Uh, Facebook, pretty much the same. Uh, then you have the Twitch Dawson's fragging and, uh, oh, on Twitter, it's a Dawson Marshall, I think on there as well. So it's, uh, yeah, no, I, I had a lot of fun as well. This was a good interview and I, I had a lot of fun. I got to talk about some things that I usually don't get to talk about in interviews. So it's, it was a lot of fun. Well, good thing. Thanks for being on. And I just want to say to everybody real quick, I know apparently the link that I had posted for the giveaway, uh, it's working on my end. So I'll figure that out. I'll post it into the Facebook page uh check for that i'll also post it on youtube make sure that everything's linking over um it is you do have like a day or something to just kind of follow along um there's a couple things you have to do to be entered in by clicking on it you're entered in immediately for that one but there's some ways to get extra entries so look for that i'll take care of that as soon as we're done here um and everybody don't forget to check out shot darts um which was i believe dawson's first manufacturer barrel was yep. with shot darts Absolutely. Um, and check out magic Wear, where you can still find Dawson's design uh, over at magic Wear. Uh, so check both those out and looking forward to Thursday, we have the president of the San Diego darts and I can't remember how it all goes. I'm a member, but our president's going to come on and talk about setting up uh, darts tournaments, uh, doing them virtual and what it's like in the pitfalls. So if you've ever been interested in, how to run one of these things and deal with it. Uh, catch Thursday morning at 7.15 this Thursday. So thanks again, Dawson. Really appreciate you being on. I uh, hope the rest of your day is great and can't wait to see you back at the Aki. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. It was a pleasure. Right. Thanks, Dawson.